This segment is brought to you by Jigmaster Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to jigmasters.com and use promo code PNF20 and save 20% off your next jig order today. Welcome to the Paddle and Fin Podcast Network. This is the final cast segment with your hosts, Brad Hicks and Josh Eldridge, where we cast our final opinions on all products, good and bad. Welcome to the final cast. Welcome everybody to the final cast on the Paddle and Fin Network. My name's Josh, and tonight I am joined with the man, the man, the myth, the legend, Why Brian does, Schiller. Dude, why does everybody build me up like I'm this huge thing? You are. You are this huge thing. I uh, I just recorded a podcast with Kayak Bass and Beers podcast. And uh, it was the same thing. He was like, man, he's like, you know, you're like this big dude. And I'm like, I'm, I'm just a normal guy, man. <laughs> like, I don't I don't get it. I don't get it. But whatever. All right. We I'll all take we it. All, we all handle fame in our different ways, you know. <sighs> well, thanks for having me here, Josh. Glad to be here. I appreciate you joining me, Brian. Hey, this is going to be a fun one, buddy. It, it is. It is. It's go, always good when we do one. Let's. Uh, so, Brian and I are going to talk about uh, Jackson kayaks tonight. Um, I've touched base a little bit on the Kill HD in the past few episodes, but we're going to go more in depth this time around. And uh, so, I'm going to talk about the Kill HD, and Brian will be talking about the Bite FD. Um, he had a little bit of experience with that, and so I figured I'd bring him on here, talk about it. It's two of Jackson's, uh, two of the three um, main uh, additions, basically, to the lineup this year. Uh, the other one being the U Pick. Brian, you almost got a U Pick, but you decided not to, didn't you? Yeah, I uh, I saw Drew Gregory had one rigged up with uh, a bow mount trolling motor, and I thought about it, and then I was like, yeah, no. Um, but I, I've I paddled that in the demo pool at uh, the Indiana Sports Travel and Boat Show, I think it's called, um, uh, this past show season. Um, it's a cool little boat, man. I could give a, a few tidbits on that, too, if you want. Yeah, yeah, we'll touch we'll touch on that. If you want to go ahead and do that, we'll just kind of graze through the uh, the U pick real quick, and then we'll uh, jump over to the the two that we have more experience with. Yeah, the U pick um, the U pick came out, and it's it's a super cool boat. Um, the name comes from I want to say it's like an Alaskan Eskimo tribe or Indian tribe or something like that. Um, but, um, the idea behind it is pretty cool. It's an open, clean platform to customize to whatever adventure you want to take. Um, you know, uh, usually when you hear that terminology, you think new canoe, um, which new canoes are good boats as well. Um, but, uh, you know, Jackson came out with the U pick and, um, it's nice because it's. It, I'm a tall guy, so tons of leg room. Like the foot pegs adjust up and down the whole uh, insides of the boat. Um, you know, I stood and paddled it. Um, stability is probably really similar to the Coos HD, I would think. Maybe maybe a little less, but I, I think it's pretty close, you know. Jackson kayaks have that kind of um, roll to them where, where the secondary stability point doesn't, like, kick in right away, you know. Yeah. So if you've never been into Jackson, like, that's one thing you'll quickly learn is, like, you know, just because you're leaning a little bit on that on that edge of the boat, it doesn't mean it's going to flip over. That secondary kicks in a little later. But that's where, like, when I paddled that thing, it paddles super fast. I remember I started paddling, and I'm like, oh, I need to slow down. I'm going to ram the edge of the pool, <laughs> you know. Um, but it's a it's a very cool concept because of the open deck. Um, I still haven't figured out how Drew rigged up that trolling motor on the bow. But, uh, you know, overall, comfortable seat. I think it's actually the same seat that's in the Kilroy HD. 
Yeah. Um, it's kind of got the same seat plate um, where the seat mounts into. Um, but I could see it being a really cool boat for doing like uh, a couple day river trips. Um, the only bummer about it is, is you have no like dry storage or hatch storage. Yeah. So um, that was like the only kind of thing. But I mean, you use a dry bag, no problem. You know, yeah. you got no issues. But uh, you could really pack a lot of stuff on there. Um, I know they have like kind of like a, uh, it's almost like a cot thing that can go in there that your dog could lay on while you're paddling down a river or something. I like that because I've been thinking about trying to get my dog on the on the on the water with me. Um, comes in a couple different cool colors, but uh, overall, it's just like a very clean slate, basic boat that handles really well tracks really well and it's got some great stability man and you can do a lot of cool thing different things with it yeah um i can't remember the width of it do you want i i want to say it's around like 34 maybe 35 i think it's like 35 or 36 actually um i can look it up here in a second and then it's uh, around i think it's 12 feet long Maybe yep. just a little bit over, but um, yep. I noticed it was a, a very maneuverable boat. Um, yeah, absolutely. Like it like you can turn it fairly easy, so yeah, it's definitely got some good pointers on it for a good river boat. Um, now I do know if I remember correctly too that it does have some weight. Um, you know, it, when I looked at that boat, what I could kind of see was that it seemed pretty dense plastic wise you know like the mold it's has a density to it that's kind of a little bit different seeming than the rest of the jackson lineup it just seemed like it was like really really sturdy because of that open like the open front and the open rear back you know back tank well that it just I, I don't know. It may it may be the same, but to me, it just seemed like it was like super super sturdy. It is like a sit on top style kayak. It's got yep. scupper holes, that sort of thing. So it's uh, definitely like a good river boat, especially if you're probably going to be paddling in some decent rapids or whatnot, and you're going to get splashed up in the boat. Like you're going to have good drainage. That's one thing I'm a little little kind of taken back by with the kill hg is the fact that it's a sit inside man and i am really big into getting out of the boat to fish sometimes and yeah. i bring in a lot of water inside that boat it's not like a ton but it's enough that i need to dump it at, you know when i get out and being the killer HD comes in at like 12, 10, 36 inches wide and it weighs like 90 something pounds. It's not the easiest thing to flip over. And especially when I've got it rigged up with yak attack stuff, you know, I'm trying not to snap anything off and right. Yeah. The, uh, the U pick comes in at 12 foot, two inches long, 35 inches wide weight capacity is 425 pounds. And then the boat itself weighs 89 pounds. Yeah. So, if anybody is in the market for a good river boat, it's definitely going to fit that bill. Um, just be wary. It is a little on the heavier side. It's not going to be like a typical grab and go boat, like maybe like right. the, just standard bite is um, or the bite angler. Um, that's going to be significantly. I think it's going to be probably almost like tw maybe almost 20. No, maybe 15 pounds lighter. So, but it's definitely a sturdy boat. It's got a ton of gear tracks. Like it's just like the Killer HD it has gear tracks on your left and right side that run basically the length of the boat. And so it makes for tons and tons of rigging options. And then the seat mount that uh, Brian had just referenced, the seat plate, uh, is just like the Killer HD also it runs the, the center of most of the length of the cockpit of the boat. And so you can slide forward really, really far or slide way back in that boat. Um, I mean, it even has the ability to do what I did and put another seat in it if you'd like. I think it, that would be a little cramped unless you happen to have two smaller people in the boat. Um, yeah. I think you get away with it. But when I had Zach in there with me, it was uh, it was I was cramped a little bit when I tried to do that. I don't think it would have been as bad if I was in the summertime not wearing waders. But 
um, I think when I had those waders on and stuff, it kind of constricted my legs down. So my feet were feeling like a little uh, tingly. Got a little sure. Numb, so. Sure. And I mean, um, <clears throat> you know, as far as adjusting that seat, that's that was kind of I think the thought in mind there was, you know, if you're packing a bunch of gear and stuff, you can distribute the weight evenly across the boat. Yeah. Um, and and um, you mentioned the tracks for the seat go front to back, but there's also gear tracks front to back on the side gunnel walls as well for rigging options. Yeah, um, it's it's a slick little boat. Uh, retails for twelve ninety nine. So, you know, it's that you know right around that thousand to fifteen hundred dollar you know price range. Great little starter boat, um, but dude, it it definitely paddles and maneuvers really well. But the tracking is really slick too. So yeah, it's a definitely a nice boat. I I paddled a little bit in a demo pool as well, and um, I was able to stand in it, you know, with no issues. And like you mentioned before, like which is kind of infamous with Jackson, especially with their fishing kayaks. Unless you're kind of in a big rig, a big rig tends to have their that um, balancing point a little bit earlier than say like the Kilroy yeah. or or yeah. not the Kilroy but the uh, U Pick in the uh, Coos HD those kind of boats because those boats you could kind of tell they're made for the river they they track really straight um, they turn you know fairly well you know and I think that's what kind of helps with that is to be able to kind of cut a little bit quicker you know if you need them make any sudden turns or whatnot so um yeah it's a cool boat man i'd like to try it, get out on it and try it again so yeah for show. Sure. So, so brian got has the uh well do you still have the bite fd no do you yeah yeah all right so with the bite fd um it is basically the bite angler but i did notice that it has a little bit of um better like accessories just a little bit i i don't know if is the gear tracking aluminum in that uh yes yeah so last year jackson came out with the bite um and that was like their budget fishing kayak um because if you look around uh, a lot of a lot of the kayak companies are coming out with those budget boats like thousand dollars or under um you know and and jackson came out with the bite last year and what else was there the bite um bonafide had the rs 11.7 and the um ex 123 uh which i think is really similar to the kilroy in a way um yeah. because they're both sitting sides i think the kilroy's got a lot better options on it um what else was in that price range the new canoe flint was close to there uh the top water 120 um or 110 by old town you know in that thousand dollar price range whatever um but the bite came in at uh 799 uh so it was really cool and then i don't know who thought of it at jackson but they were like hey let's throw a pedal drive in this thing <laughs> And, you know, that thing has now since been dubbed the go-kart, go-kart kayak, you know, because it just rips around. Yeah. Um, it's 11 and a half feet long. It's one of the lightest pedal drives on the market. It's It comes in at 93 pounds um, with the drive in it and uh, super light. So like we were just talking about the U-Pick, that was 82 pounds. You're talking about another 11 pounds and you got a pedal drive. Yeah. Whereas that pedal drive unit, um, you know, weighs, I think it's like 30 pounds uh, roughly. But um, because it's so small, it turns. So so we'll get into that. But, um, you know, it maneuvers fairly well, super light um, for a pedal drive. It's got the new FD three D pedal drive in it. I think I said that right. FD three D, um, which you know the one thing about like the older style Jackson pedal drives is a few of them had some issues, and that's something that folks talk about. And I mean, they may have launched that a little prematurely, um, but 
you know, they launched the pedal drive, they got a ton of feedback, and now they've taken that back to the drawing board and really dialed it in. So that new drive is super smooth, uh, super quick. Not only that, but Jackson came out with the Flex Drive E, which turns the pedal drive into an electric motor. So, like, they had to upgrade for that, too. Mm -hmm. um, and don't get me wrong, the older style boats can can handle that uh, Flex Drive E as well. Um, but for a pedal drive, like, beginner's boat comes in at, like, $21.99. Um, it's a cool little rig, man. Um, yeah. My biggest complaint about it is because it's so short, you would think the thing would turn on a dime, but the the turning on it actually isn't the greatest. Um, I'm just being 100% honest there. And they know it uh, now. There's been a lot of uh, Jackson folks and people that have bought the boat already, like giving some feedback on that. And it's because that rudder doesn't turn as far as I think it should. Yeah. Um, but uh, overall, I mean, it's not horrible. Um, I have stood in it. I'm like 6'4", 250. Uh, I've stood and fished out of it. I actually pedaled it in the river because um, that's the nice thing about that Jackson uh, flex drive is, you know, if you hit something, that drive pops up. Um, it can go relatively shallow. I think I've pedaled that thing in like a foot and a half foot of water, something like that. Um, you got storage in the front and the back, uh, with the bungee system going across. It's not like hatch style, so it's all open. So like, kind of like the U pick, like if you were going to do some stuff where you didn't want things to get wet, you'd have to bring a dry bag. Um, they made upgrades to the seat. Because last year when they came out with the bite, um, that was the biggest complaint is the seat wasn't the most comfortable. Um, so they definitely uh, didn't upgrade on that. It's a lot more comfortable uh, than yeah, last it's got, year's. It's got the same seat as like my boat or even like the big rig FD has. Um, uh, I think they upgraded I think yeah, in the FD it does, um, and I think even maybe the Bite Angler has yes. the update, yes. the better seat as seat. well. Yeah. I think the standard Bite has a downgraded seat, but right. it's still an improvement on what they had last year. Yeah, it's not the same seat that's in the um, Big Rig or the Kusa, um, but I okay. think it's the same seat that's in the U Pick and the Kilroy. Okay. Um, I could be a little off on that, but they're really similar. Um, there is some aluminum gear tracks up in the front. There's none in the back because they have the uh, steering rod covers over there. But you could definitely mount some tracks on the back there. Um, and then they also, but they also have the steering system is runs on top of the boat instead of through the boat, and they've right. got covers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was referring to. Um, but you got some tracks in the front. You could definitely mount more in the back. Uh, the one thing I really liked about it was the handles, the way they did the handles on that boat, um, in the front and the back, they're big open. Um, you can carry it to the side of you very comfortably, um, compared to like other model boats. Um, those handles are super nice. Um, I really liked that. Um, but yeah, man, overall, it's, it's a very so nice little boat. Bite FD has, yeah, the Byte FD has the upgraded, uh, the rudder system. And you talked about, um, you know, it's still kind of having a bit of a issue steering wise. Not that it has an issue steering. It just, it takes quite a bit of space to turn, right, turn that right. boat, just like, just like the big rig does. Yeah. <laughs> You know, so do you, you had experience with the old rudder. Um, do you think that the, F, I think it's a 3D rudder is what they're calling that one too, almost. It's or, the orange one. Do you think yeah. that has made a difference at all? Yeah, it makes a difference because it disperses or displaces more water as you turn. However, I think it's something in the linkage, like it needs to be shortened up or something. So that way you can. If you if you look at the back of the boat and the rudder is straight and then you turn it all the way to the left or the right, 
it maybe turns 30 degrees. Um, mm-hmm. Whereas I think if it would go 45 to 50, that thing would turn on a dime. Yeah, And, I, you know, it's funny, like, I don't know if they shortened it up because, like, if you could turn that far, like, would it roll somebody out of the boat or something? Kind of like what you hear uh, about, like, that 360 drive on the Hobie, yeah. like, guys hitting that, the 360 drive steering instead of the actual rudder steering. And then it, like, guys are, like, pedaling really hard and fast, and then next thing you know, they hit the wrong thing, and it's, like causing the boat to turn real quick and then like want to like roll you out of it type deal yeah um so i don't know if like that was something they were concerned about or what but um i just think it could be it could be more efficient you know instead of having to make these big wide turns like i said where i you know i was on the river with that boat and i thought you know it kind of sucked you know because you're fighting current and stuff like that and i couldn't really turn as quick as i wanted to i could turn faster with a paddle than i could with the rudder in those situations but if you're on a lake not a huge deal but like in the river situation it just didn't work out the best yeah so i mean but you know that's the thing you're talking river versus lake uh you know obviously those are two different animals um and you know probably should be using a paddle to turn versus a pedal drive you know when you you really break it down so it's just one of those things man yeah and that boat it's definitely stable enough if anybody's wondering it's 35 inches wide as well and just under 12 feet long so it's uh an easy kayak to stand in as well 11 yeah 11 and a half feet yep definitely a cool boat uh it's a great uh introductory pedal drive boat um so if you guys are in the market definitely check out jackson kayaks bite fd and um you know like i I do agree with you in the sense of like you know it does lack a little bit of gear track um but that boat is super compact like so it's it's limited obviously and only being 11 six and how much gear tracking you can you know really kind of install especially with your steering controls there and you know i think if you started adding things like along the side of the seat it it, it kind of get a little bit hairy as far sure. as like what where you could because it doesn't it's just that stuff can get in your way real easy when you're trying to steer so Right. Um, I do like the fact that it has aluminum gear tracks. I've become a big fan of the aluminum gear tracks over the uh, the plastic ones on like the Coos HD and stuff, just because I feel like they're not that they're not sturdy. Um, they are sturdy. They seem to hold up well. Um, but now this could be also my experience with the way I used to mount stuff with a lot of the the gear track um, ram balls, that sort of thing. And so it always felt like everything was kind of like flimsy a little bit, like it wanted to sway, but I never worried anything would come out of the gear track. But with the aluminums, it it just uh, you have a little bit more comfort of cranking down on a little bit tighter, tightening everything up without the worry of maybe warping the plastic gear track. So it's cool seeing that they upgraded that on the FD. But uh, I guess we'll roll into the Kilroy HD. It's the boat that I'm paddling this year. Um, so far, I've really enjoyed it. Um, there's a couple of little gripes that I have about it here, but nothing that's like a deal breaker for me. Um, I already mentioned the first, which is just the fact that it is a sit inside. There's no drainage port, um, and you got to try to flip that thing over. It's not the easiest thing when you're by yourself. Not too big of a deal with two people. But because it's a sit inside, it has like a lip. So when you go to flip it like up on its side, it just doesn't pour out. You still have to flip it all the way upside down and then roll it again in the same direction that you were flipping it to kind of get everything to come out. And even at that, it still has a little bit of water, nothing that a towel, you know, won't take care of. But for me, it's just out of the norm because I paddle to sit on top for so long with you know the standard you know scupper holes to drain out any excess water i never you know 
had to stick a towel anywhere to kind of soak it up except for maybe on the inside storage and that was even, that was water from condensation nine times out of ten unless i left the boat out in the rain but yeah that comes in at 36 inches wide 12 foot 10 inches long it is not your typical set inside that people are used to which tend to be short you know and <clears throat> You know, even like how the Kilroy was, it's it's much bigger boat um, than what people realize. It is kind of weird because it it is heavier than my Kuse, uh, my previous Kuse HD by like probably like ten pounds, but it doesn't carry like that because of the um, the new handle. Because the I have on the Kilroy HD is similar handle that what Brian referred to that's on the Bite FD and on the U Pick, which is a like a molded in handle like it's part of the boat itself. And from my friends that have picked that boat up, they're like, wow, this thing's light, you know, compared to like your Kusa. And I'm like, it's actually heavier, but it's just easier to carry because that Kusa handle made it tough to want to carry, like you said, to the side a little bit. Um, And that handle was a little rough on your hands. Like it felt like it was just digging into into your palm, you know, pretty badly. So. But um, it tracks great. It's actually a fairly fast boat. It's maneuverable in the rivers. Um, it does get affected by the wind. I can't say that it, it's any different than what this HD was. Uh, I anticipated that just by the hull design. Uh, the front of the boat kind of sits not up out of the water, but it seems to angle up a little bit. Um, I think that helps make the boat fast and track well, but at the same time, it does cause an issue uh, with catching wind fairly easily. So I'm looking at some options as far as like, you know, shallow water anchor, that sort of thing. I got a um, another anchor wizard um, for it, even though I told myself I wouldn't get another one because I rarely use my other one. But I got the low profile one this time, so it won't bother me as much, I hope. Yeah. Yeah, I know, uh, too, um, you know, one of our hosts here at Paddle and Finn, uh, Dustin Nichols, uh, paddles that quite regularly, and he uses it for saltwater fishing. Yeah. Um, and he loves that thing, man, in the saltwater. Yeah. So that's something, too. I mean, I know you and I don't have experience with that, but that's maybe something you want to talk to Dustin about down the road is, you know, salt fishing out of that thing. I know he chases a lot of redfish and sea trout and... Um, he just loves how well that thing paddles. And I know one day he told me, dude, he paddled that thing like 9, 10, 11 miles or something. Yeah. You know, crazy, which is awesome, you know? Yeah. Um, that that it works out that well for him. So, but. Yeah, and there's a couple other little things that I didn't like, but it's just that comes with the design of that style boat. And that was like not having like a standard rear tank well to put my tackle you know, like my black pack in. And I kind of tried a couple tricks. I bought um, Justin Marshall's old bungee system from his yeah. And I tried that. But the problem with that was is the tension of those bungees on the black pack, which I had to finagle like to try to do it. Because, it, it, you know, that that is used to coming from the bottom of the boat up to your, you know, to your tackle box, right? And with this boat it's the track system is almost at the same level as the top of the black pack it's just maybe a couple inches down from the top part like the top level part of your uh, black packer and whatever tackle box you're using so what i ended up doing is i didn't like it because it would actually i could see it physically pulling the gunnel walls like in from the gear track you know because all the tension from the bungees so like as i'm trying to put it on it shifts the whole black pack over to one side and I have to grab it by the handle and like pull it over and wrap the bungee around it. It was just kind of a pain in the butt. And then on top of that, I've been trying to figure out like what I want to do anchor wise. And I was like, well, all this bungee stuff in there is going to kind of be in the way because I wanted to use like the yak attack eyelets to run the cordage from the anchor wizard. And I wanted to put them kind of where that bungee system that the, uh, the mounts were that go into your gear track for it. So I ended up opting to buy two sets of the Yak Attack tie down, the strap style tie down, not the eyelet tie downs. And I, I looked around at a couple of different like fishing companies or what, and I ran across Sims and Sims makes these little straps and they're only like 15 inches long. 
and they're for like a, they're backpacks yeah for like fly fishing and it's to strap uh an extra rod with you or whatever you know to put on your backpack or you know a couple rods and it's um it's made out of this kind of like weird rubber material um it doesn't stretch real far it doesn't really stretch at all to be honest with you but it's kind of grippy and it has it's like a cam strap but it's only 15 inches long so i put a set on top of the gear tracks on my black pack and then put a you know one a set on the left and right gunnel uh track and it straps down fairly well it's not completely like super tight but i think it does what i need it to do and it, my black pack's not back there sliding around so very cool man. i like it 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 works good it, and it kind of took down the clutter of having that bungee system so yeah um it so far pretty cool uh it's working out we'll see hopefully i never flip it and test to see if it actually how well it holds because the one thing that i don't like about those straps is it's a um it's pla- like a plastic cam so like i feel like it's not cinching down on it it is i try to tug it you know because the rubber that's used in that strap is actually kind of like grippy so um but other than that I haven't really done a whole lot of mods to it. Um, like I said, I plan on doing uh, the Anchor Wizard, but um, the boat is super, super crazy stable. Like, yeah, it's super easy to stand in. Um, you know, I think that comes from being a sit on sit inside, but it's also got the width and length of like you know of a standard like sit on top style kayak if not a little bit longer i mean it's almost pushing 13 feet long so right um <clears throat> the seat is comfortable i like the seat um i always had kind of the gripe with the jackson the new jackson seat in the pedal drives because it always felt like those straps were slipping and i would just keep leaning further and further and further back throughout the day but i attribute that to the action of actually pedaling a pedal drive and that's what's causing it is i'm pushing against those pedals and it's pushing me into the seat i don't have that same effect in the seat straps from paddling as i did from the actual pedal drive so um it's got a ton of space it's got a deck mat like basically on the pretty much i think the three quarters maybe a quarter up from like the back of the boat through the front um another thing that i really like is measuring fish i'm like yeah. flopping around all you want yeah. you're not going anywhere <laughs> homie <laughs> i love it i love it that's that's the nice yeah. thing about that man you know <laughs> uh, um yeah that's hilarious i mean they're gonna they're gonna have to put on some serious acrobatic skills i mean i'm not <laughs> saying they can't happen but it's hard. Right. I, mean, right. I had one flop all over the place man and uh i was just I was cracking up because I'm trying to catch and it keeps flopping. And I'm like, man, if I was in my Coos HD, that thing would have been long gone. Long by gone. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you would have been saying every swear name under the sun, dude. <laughs> Just frustrated. Just frustrated. Um, I do really like the paddle holder on the sides because it's got a bungee on each side. And there's like a like a ledge that's like yeah. part of the mold. That the, it, your paddle sits in real nice. Yeah, the Bite FD's got that, and I think the U Picks even got that as well. I might be wrong on the U Pick, but I know the Bite FD does for sure. Yeah. And that it, is super nice. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of had something similar in the QS HD, but I, it just seemed like your paddle could turn real easy in it. And so, it, I think it ran off using two bungees. And, you know, to sit there and have to mess with two bungees like that, it's just a little inconvenient especially if you're in a tight situation on the river or whatnot and you need to kind of access the paddle quickly right uh do be aware though if you are using that and you're trying to unsnap it and you're kind of like rocking around that once it's unsnapped it has the ability to roll like right off the side of the kayak because it is on the outer edge so um but it does have that um that paddle strap on the front um i really dig the uh the deck mat that's on the top front and rear of the boat also um pretty cool idea uh it almost looks good enough to stand in i don't have the balls yet to attempt to do that but (laughs) it almost looks like you could stand up there right right it's got that like little platform up there 
<laughs> you could do no, the yeah, karate kid up there, dude. The, <laughs> the crane kick. It'd be perfect, man. Perfect just, for that. Maybe that's just, what they had in mind. You know? Just the yoga, the crane pose, whatever yeah. that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My ass would fall right off, dude. Just... Daniel son. <laughs> so um it doesn't it does have internal rod storage. I that is one thing that I'm not a big fan of. Um, I didn't, I had it on a Kuse HD, but it was on the outside of the boat and I lost a rod one time messing with that thing. And then, so it was, it was kind of nice. The thought of it is nice. The execution on the, the rear part of it isn't, is where I kind of have a hang up. I don't see an issue with having my rods bent for a little bit of period of time, like during the day, if you're out fishing, I know it's not good to store your rods like that for a long period of time because the rod can actually take that bend and kind of keep it there. But with, um, I, it's just the seat is so kind of close to it's really clumsy trying to get the rod out of that and slid out. You got to kind of pick it up and have it aimed out of the boat in a sense to get it out. And it's just, it's so close. It's so clustered. It just for some, I don't know if I'm not utilizing it correctly. I haven't figured that out yet, but I'm not a big fan of it. Um, I've done it before. And then, and then a hard part about having the rods in there that I noticed, especially when I was catching fish for tournament, was my catch board. My catch board just kind of perfectly in there. But when those rods are in there, it just bangs into the rods. I could see how I could get the bump part of the board up underneath the rod, you know, and sitting there trying to fish that from underneath it. That would be a little bit of a pain, but um but the uh, that catch board it's kind of cool so you know how you have that seat platform that yeah the seat is sitting on that plate well you know there's like a little ledge right kind of where those hooks are especially the bottom set the front sets kind of up you know because you can you can position that in a lower position a higher position and I will set my catch board like just underneath my legs right on the ledge of that it tends to slide off a little bit but um, I think it's some, you know, if I added maybe some, some rubber or something on the bottom of the catch board, it would pretty much stay in place right there. But, um, it's got a bungee that runs kind of on your, uh, uh, left and right side through the boat too. And it's awesome, dude. I can just tether the catch board right to that bungee system and keeps that thing in place from going anywhere. And I don't have to use a really long leash because that thing runs so far that, I put a key, the key ring on the bungee itself, so it just slides right up and down along that bungee. Yeah. <clears throat> I like um, it, dude. I like it. But overall, super happy with the boat. Um, you know, it's uh, definitely a cool kayak. It's uh, it's unique, too. It's kind of, you know, a lot of people call it the, like, it's like a canoe. And it sort of yeah. is. It's it's a it's a big kayak. It retails for fifteen ninety nine, so it's got a decent price tag on it. Um, and, uh, you know, it's 12 feet, like we mentioned before, 12 feet 10, 36 inches wide. Uh, the capacity for it's 450 pounds. Total weight is uh, 98 pounds. So it's not a light kayak, but I think that you would see that it um, – it feels lighter than it actually is just with the new handles. Um, to go kind of off the, the actual um, issue and, and the one issue, and I just, I don't know if you saw my post in the Jackson owners group. Somebody had made a uh, little bar system to store it because of the feel somebody else had posted that they had a feeling that the gunnel walls are caving in on the boat from storage. Um, hmm. I store mine on the J cradles from Malone on my trailer. And I think that's kind of where that is coming from is the storage of the boat like that. And the weight of it is just kind of pressing, pressing it in. Cause I bought that accessory kind of tray, that slide tray. It's got a couple of rod holders, just a piece of plastic. It goes from left to right. And it's supposed to fit the gear tracks. And when I went to install that, man, it was a good solid inch and a half off. And so I was kind of worried. I'm like, well, I, I strap my kayak down. I use, um, I don't use cam straps. I use ratchet straps, but I don't, I don't tighten the boat down that tight on there. 
like at all. Like I really don't. I use so I use like an excessive amount. I don't use just like one. I use three. So I go through the front handle, through the rear handle, and then I go across the top. And the one on the top is always loose. It's just to keep the kayak from bouncing real bad okay. in the back yeah. of my truck. And because um, when I had the Coos HD, I would have that happen, and the boat would shift, like you know, shift direction, stay instead of staying straight. And then, but when somebody told when I read that comment, I realized that it's actually probably from the way I'm storing that kayak is what's causing it, because it's sitting on those J uh, those J cradles from Malone on the the kayak, so it's sitting on its side, and I think the weight of the boat is causing it. Um, it wasn't a hard fix. I was able to kind of actually prep, like pull it out by hand and put the bolts in. So, but this one guy, he's made of this um, little bar system, dude, that he puts in there. So when he goes to store it, it's pushing against the walls of the kayak to keep it, you know, sturdy in there, you know. So when he stores it, so it's something I might want to look into doing as well. So, yeah, I know you're going to give me a hard time about the ratchet straps when you said, <laughs> but yeah. Dude, I, 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 mean, I learned that I learned that last year. Um, I put uh, a pretty significant dent in the front of my boat from ratchet strapping it too too much uh, on the rear one. Um, yeah. and it, like it pushed like into the you know the truck bed so hard. And actually, it probably wasn't even the fact that it was pushing that hard, but I used to keep that thing in the back of my truck when I go into work in, in the summertime. so I think it would heat up and you know, cause a little bit of a uh, cave in, but I never had an issue where it stayed. It always came back out. So, um, but yeah, just be weary if you are using ratchet straps, like Brian, you know, nodded, like just don't cinch down real hard. If, if you're going to use them, you use a bunch of them. Um, that way you can keep everything loose, but everything still stays where it needs to stay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because people give me a hard time. They give me a hard time because, I, I mean, I use three straps for one kayak. And I told them, I was like, the reason I do it is because I keep them on the loose side. That way I'm not putting, like, excessive pressure anywhere. But I still have enough straps in key places to keep that boat, like, in check, you know, while it's bouncing down the highway. So, right, right. I mean, yeah, if you're doing that and keeping them loose, you can get away with that for sure. Um but yeah, I always I always try to uh, steer people away from uh, um, ratchet straps. Using ratchets and use the cam straps. I use uh, like either the NRS or the I just got a bu- uh, two sets of the Yak Attack ones, and I really like the Yak Attack ones. Yeah, uh, I have those for the trailer. Like I don't use ratchet straps on my trailer. I use the cam straps at that point. Yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. when I roll solo and I throw it in the back of the truck. So, but I like uh, it, man. Um, let me think. Anything else to add with that? Um, not. It, you know, if if anybody's local in Southwest Ohio, though, feel free to contact me. I'll take you guys out in the boat. Um, it's you know the demo boat for Loveland, so uh, I'll be more than willing to meet up. You know, once this virus stuff gets over with and everything starts to open back up, you know, we'll be down at the shop doing, you know, demos with all these boats. So feel free to reach out and, um, you know. Yes, same same goes for me up here in northern Illinois, and I can get my hands on pretty much any Jackson kayak you want to try. Um, new Canoe, Old Town, and Bonafide. So. Heck yeah. So, yeah, buddy. buddy. Thank yeah, you for joining buddy. me tonight. Yeah, absolutely, man. Always a pleasure chatting with the one and only Trash Panda. So I was thinking about this. Um, you know, we got a little matchup this weekend, but this isn't going up till next week. All right. So you want to predict how many inches you're going to come up with? Twelve and a half. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah one dink. 12 and a half fish. What well, one dink in the last five minutes? It's gonna no, be we, boring. We should do. We should both guess, and then whoever's the furthest off has to do something that the other guy tells him he's got to do, like right. go float the river in a dress or something. 
and then video it and post it on the Facebook page. All right. The, what, I don't. I don't, don't own a dress. I don't own dresses like you do. Your wife has got dresses. Come on. She, my wife's too skinny, man. I'd be busting out in some wrong places. That that's perfect. That's the whole point. <laughs> I'd just be paddled down the river. There's all these anglers on the bank just puking. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new, vi- it's well, a new it virus. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't have to be like necessarily that. I'm just saying, like. You, we we can get creative with it. You get to choose if you win. All right, let's let's figure it out right here and now. All right. So how many inches are you gonna have? Eighty five. You're gonna have eighty five. I don't want to get this wrong. Uh. Well, I guess I could say eighty five as well, and then like. Whoever is closer or further away from that is going to be is going to be the loser. What if you're over that? So yeah, that's what I'm saying. So like, if I'm like five inches over and you're ten inches over, you lose. All right, but what if I'm five over and you're two under? Then I win because I no. I was the, I was the closest to the number. Yeah, yeah, because no. two's closer than five. <laughs> I know, but I still fished better than you. So it doesn't that. matter. It's it's guessing your inches. Over under on guessing your like, inches. I, I don't like this game. Come on. I'll go I'm with not... eighty five inches too, so here we go. We're both gonna like skunk uh, and we'll have to rematch like those other clowns. Oh, that's all right. It's all right. Uh all right, yeah, all right, it's at 85, both of us picking 85. All right, all right, this will be fun, so stay tuned, stay tuned. <laughs> awesome, this is going to be great. It's it's going to be like the only time you see somebody catch possibly a 20-inch fish and be upset about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Damn it, I got 105 inches, I'm so screwed. <laughs> Brian's got 84 and three quarters. Like he's like, I'm done. Done. I'll take the loss. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, too funny. I like it. It throws a twist in it, man. Yeah. So very good. Love it. All, All right. right. Well, I do want to thank everybody for listening to the final cast again. Uh Brian, it's always a, a joy to have you on the episode, man. Look forward to doing a couple more this year, hopefully. And uh, with that, I think we'll sign up. Brian, you got anything else you want to add? Just wear your PFDs. Pulling a Dan Perry. I like that. <laughs> wear your PFDs. It's important. It's Too important. many people die for no reason. It's a good point, though. I know. I love it. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, again. And everybody have a good night. Peace out. Peace. Go check out the website, guys, paddle, the letter N and fin.com. Also, check out YouTube, youtube.com forward slash paddle and fin. If you got a question, comment, want to hear from a future guest, feel free to email us at paddle, the letter N and fin at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media. We're doing giveaways, announcements, things like that at Facebook and Instagram at paddle and fin. Shout out to our show supporters, Rocktown Adventures, Leveling Canoe and Kayak, Hammered Lures, Fish Mob Lures, TRC Covers, Catch Products. Go to catchproducts.com. You can put the Paddle and Fin logo right on your catch board. Don't forget to go over and pick up your Jig Masters jigs. Use promo code PNF20 and save 20% today. Don't forget to rate and review the podcast on whatever platform you're listening to. It helps grow the audience, helps others find our podcast. So please drop a five-star rating in on the podcast platform you're listening on. Don't forget about the Recycled Plastics program, you guys. Take your used plastic baits, put them in an envelope, mail them to the address in the show notes. Our man Eric Richards at Hammer Lures melts those down, makes new baits, and donates them to various chapters of Heroes on the Water.